for moving there. We'll be heading out of town next month, week of the 13th. We'll be praying, preaching with Brother Jay, poor Brother Jay. Usually we go see our daughter there, and then we cut over. But she'll be gone by then. That's why we didn't make plans so I could join them. That's all right. It's all good. It's all good. Thanks for yesterday. Thanks. Uh, it. Uh, you know, the Bible talks about putting the word out. Think your Bibles go to Luke chapter 17. Put the word out. We try to do that the best we can. You don't have to wait for us, though. You don't have to wait for opportunities that we do stuff as a church. Go ahead and get yourself a handful of gospel tracts on the way out today. And uh, cast the bread on upon many waters, right? That's, that's how it works. And uh, thanks for the Norwoods. Appreciate uh, it's twice now, I believe, you guys coming from uh, the, the great state of Maine. I guess where all lobsters are, although I was told it's kind of their Canadian connection there. So definitely we'll pray for your traveling mercies. I guess you're heading out Tuesday, I think. And, uh, you know, we appreciate it because, you know, Brother Norwood and his family, it's not that they just show up and sit there. They actually, like, they've been going street preaching and finding dead bodies and vehicles and stuff. And No? Okay, we can't prove that. But anyway, uh, yeah, they come out and pass tracks out and go to God for it. It's uh, the adventure, right? And so thank you very much, brother. We'll miss you guys and uh, Lord Terry's and... You guys still have uh, a place to come to with your in-laws. They hadn't sold it off. However, that was working out for you guys. Then we'll definitely look forward to seeing you next next year. All right, Luke chapter 17. So we've been uh, trying to preach and or teach about the second coming of Jesus Christ. Last week we talked about there's kind of two parts there to that second coming. Like the first part of the first coming was to believers only. And then the second part of his first coming was when John the Baptist announced him, right? The Lamb of God, he called him, which taketh away the sin of the world. And then everybody saw him. That's when Jesus Christ started his public ministry. So as there are two parts to the first coming, there's two parts to the second coming. First part of the second coming uh, is the rapture. And uh, that's when Jesus Christ comes back. And now he never does physically come back on on and, and stand there. He won't put his foot down on the planet. He comes in the clouds. Get that in Acts chapter 1. He leaves in the clouds. He's coming back in the clouds. And like the second part of his first coming, it would be that every eye sees him. So that's the second coming. It's, it, it, it would be more so that part of it referred to as the second advent. And uh, that's when Jesus Christ comes back in Revelation 19 and takes over. And that's coming. And you can see everything kind of coming to, to fruition. And, uh, you know, we got to watch out with the signs and different stuff like that when it comes to Bible. Because, you know, the Jews require a sign. We're not Jews. We're the church. And um, that book says, a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. Your, your guide is that Bible that you have in your lap. It would be your responsibility to read it and then you hear it preached and stuff and then you don't have to get glued to you know Pastor Joe's uh, every day there's something coming out of the Bible for a sign show and and you know it, you'll get into a little bit of that and again you could do that if you'd like you could watch whatever you want to watch um, but you need to read, though. That's where the Bible is. That's the purpose of the book. That's the purpose of why he wrote it down for you. And so what we want to show you is how, you know, how close are we to this? Because over there, Peter, there'll be scoffers saying, where is the promises of, of his coming? And we've already heard that. We've heard that there were 88 reasons for Jesus Christ to come back in 1988. I got saved in 1988, and then I had no idea what the second coming was. I had no idea about the rapture. And then when I got saved, I started coming to church and, and uh, Bob believe in work, and they started talking about it. And I, you know, I was kind of embarrassed because I didn't know anything and I didn't want to raise my hand to ask, like, so what is it that you guys keep talking about that this guy, Lord, coming back? And eventually I picked up on the fact and I was very pleased that, okay, oh, all right, so I'm saved though. So if, that, if he does come back, if the rapture does take place, First Thessalonians chapter 4, if he does take today, I'm going. 
And they're like, yeah, if you're saved, you're in. I said, yeah, I'm in. I got saved. I got saved over here in August 21st. I'm right. They say, yes. Boy, I thought I, that's really good. I'm glad. That's like, whoo, close. Because then I found out that book, like 88 Reasons Why Jesus Christ is Coming Back in 1988. And then he didn't come back in 1988. But that's all right. So don't worry about all these little books. Worry about your book. And the Bible tells us that we're to hold fast until the day comes and just do what you're told to do. Read your Bible and, and try to stay busy for Jesus Christ so that when that day comes, you're not embarrassed. And I, it'd be like when um, when dad had told you, hey, I need you to go ahead and clean out whatever, do your homework, make sure you do the yard, and I'll be back. And then he's not going to tell you, it's usually around kind of a certain 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock. But then you get sidetracked, you, you know, you get on your phone and then you start getting on your bicycle and you and you do your thing with your buddies and stuff. And then then come come the come. And it came to pass. And what, what, what's that sound? That's the car that just pulled up in the driveway is what that was. And you and like my kids were bad at that, too. Like we come like they're off on Mondays, like their school, their private school. This is cool. I try to tell them about that over there. They had four days. They had four, ten days. They have four 10-hour days instead of four 8-hour days, five 8-hour days, four 10s, and you get Monday off. So every weekend is a three-day weekend. So our kids were off on Mondays, and when we came home, by the time we came home from work, everybody was, we always, they're always doing the stuff when we, because I know how that worked. It would be they'd hear that truck or whatever we had, and it was like they just get started. You can almost hear the vacuum cranking up, you know, when you get closer to the door. So anyway, the Bible says very specifically that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back. We went over many verses to kind of go over that to let you know that he's commenting on it. And now the question is, well, like, can we find out basically how close we are? And I believe you can know that because... Because Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 that you know, that day is not supposed to overtake you like a thief. It's not supposed to overtake you. And if you're not careful, what happens is you just get sidetracked in the way the world works. And the world is one big giant uh, distraction. And the only thing you got to worry about is what God said about any of it anyway, right? And if you learn to do that, and we say this all the time, you sleep better. Luke chapter 17, verse 6. Did we pray? We did? All right, go ahead, Brother Mikey. Dear Heavenly Father, we would pray that the Scriptures understanding allow us all to have a light heart for this message, Lord, and learn something about you. All right, Luke chapter 17, starting in verse 26. And as it was, as it was in the days of Noah, all right, that's N-O-E, but it's Noah, uh, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, right? They drank. They married wives. There ain't no... Married husbands, married men, married men. That ain't in that. That ain't. That ain't have. That's not normal. They were given in marriage until the day Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. So the Lord gave us, amongst other things, and there's plenty, amongst other things, He gave you characteristics. So, like, He would know that you'd want to know. You ought to occupy till He comes, which means you should, you should acknowledge. Matter of fact, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, he gave you, uh, he gave you, Paul rather, talked about, you know what, I'm looking for, I already know my departure's at hand. He says there lays up for him a crown of righteousness, I think it's called. And he says it's not only for me, but if you get to the point where you love his appearing, you get the same crown. And so the idea in this Bible is that God doesn't want you to get to the point where you're always on your heels about things like you know you getting blindsided about how how or what he expects from you but but i don't know outside of like like there's no pill for that there's no treatment for that there's nothing you plug in there's nothing you download like so even if you got to the point which is probably getting pretty close if you're able to get this whatever this uh the guy from tesla what's his name Elon Musk wants to put something in your head to get, you know, now you're like the Matrix or whatever. And 
connected. So I got the Bible version in my head. I, I don't even know if that, that, that'll that help you because it doesn't have to do with your head. It has to do with your heart. See? Right. And so you can get to the point where you know everything. But if you're not in the in, in the in the place or the frame of mind or you don't have the heart to do it right then what does it matter that you know all that so i'm sure here at the bible believing work like we have in south florida you all know you guys are all old enough to know the difference between right and wrong whether or not you know what the bible says about it you have a conscience and we talked a little bit about that in sunday school right the age of conscience and so, right, you already have a problem with that. So you already know dad expects a certain sum, or your parents accept, expect a certain sum, your school expects a certain sum, your job expects a certain sum, and, you know, you cut corners and you don't fulfill that. So now all of a sudden you got, you know, this thing in the back of your head or the side of your head, wherever they're, you're going to put it, or however it works. And now what's going to change? It won't change. You already know enough Bible to do right. And, and you just got to learn to build on that. But know that, that, that God is that guy. He's the guy that wants you to know about things. There's an expectation there. And his reward is with them. So, so you read the Bible. Not only is he telling you, you know what, uh, yeah, I'm coming. But, you know, I loved you enough to die for you. But that's not all there is to that salvation of yours. And I think what happens is you're not an, around the Bible enough to motive, get motivated. It, there, this Bible should help motivate you. Bible-believing preachers should help motivate you, right? Uh, the TV is not designed to motivate you. It's designed to take you away. It's Most of it, if not all of it, it's all fantasy, right? It's all, that, that didn't happen. That guy didn't marry that girl. That, that dog didn't get hit by a car for real. And you're all bawling there and you're laughing your head off and, you know, you're seeing people get ch cut in half, chopped in half with a machine gun. And then, you know, now it's time for church and they, you're not getting much out of that. It's all about the distraction. That's why the Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. And once you get kind of tied up and yoked up with this book, then you realize, you know what? You can hear all that nonsense. You can hear all the background noise. You could, you could see the issues. That, and there are issues. Well, you know what? I got a blessed hope about that, and this is all temporary. And once you get the right frame, once you get the right perspective about how this Bible works, then glory to God for it. All right, so we'll, we last week we went over the first characteristic, and that was uh, the days of Noah over there. In Gen uh, go to uh, Genesis chapter 6. And there was this, uh, they say, well, how's the days of Noah? Okay, what did, what did you do to figure out what that was? Well, first of all, they tell you, the text in Luke says that, you know what, it sounds like they're just doing what we're doing today. And he says that they uh, did eat, they drank, they were married, right? They gave in marriage until the day Noah entered into the ark. And then the same with Lot, if you, if you see the characteristics there, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold. That sounds like, like everyday America to me. But you could get a little bit further in that if he says it's like the days of Noah, it's not only that they're just going to do what they typically do as if they're going to the mall or they're just living their life in the United States because that seemed pretty close to the way America works. Man, we just do our stuff. We just, you know, when we get around to it, we'll do stuff for God. When we ain't around, we, we will do our own thing. But then you can get to the characteristics by actually reading where in the Bible these guys show up. So when you read the Bible in Genesis chapter 6, Talking about the days of Noah, Bible says, And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto him. The sons of God saw that the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took upon them wives all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for, they, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be in hundred and twenty years. And there were giants in the day in those days. And after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children unto them, the same became mighty men of old that were of old, men of renown. And you'd look at that deal and you'd say, well, how does that apply to us? Because depending on what study Bible you have, if you got a study Bible, Schofield, like if you got a Schofield reference Bible, he dismisses all that as being some kind of supernatural whatever. And he'll say, and others, most others say, those sons of God are actually the godly line of Seth. 
And I don't know where you got that because that's not what that said. I didn't call anybody a God. That, that line there, that sons of God in verse 2, they, they didn't say that was Seth, right? And let's just say it was for some reason. They would just say, you know what? That's what that means because most of your fundamentals, well, well they, just, they just have a hard time believing what the text says. Like sometimes I do too, but I don't mess with the text, right? I, I don't put a square peg in a round hole. There are things in the Bible I don't understand, and I just move on to the next verse where I do understand it. But there's plenty in that Bible I understand. The idea is I don't understand, I don't read it. Why don't you read I don't understand it, so I don't. Well, you're, don't do that. So here, let's look at these notes. All right, verse 2. Here, sex reign rears, rather, its ugly head after it peaked around the corner in Genesis chapter 3. From here... Um, we, from here, from here on, we find a constant attack against man's seed in a sexual sense in order to prevent what God said in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. That was where God talks about the seed, right? Her seed and his seed and all that. And so what you will do is you'll see that way that works like that. And you see those attacks all the time. And, you know, not to get real caught up into this because I'll never get through where I'm trying to get to, but this abortion deal, all this attack on kids and different things, you know, that first attack, if I remember correctly, that was Pharaoh, right? When he was killing kids and different things. And then you hear the same thing show up with Herod. And so, so you'll see that there's this, this satanic attack on, uh, on little kids and, and where you reach, where you're at now with these last days, these perilous times, you can see it in uh, Romans chapter one, and in 2 Timothy chapter 3, is that you're getting into a point or getting to a point ra rather where, where you'll be without natural affection. And the natural affection for a female, once she finds out she's pregnant, right, or people find out that you're having a baby, it should be a good thing. That's natural affection. That's what the animals do. Matter of fact, if you are in the woods and you see this little baby bear coming around, you're ready to take a little picture of something. <laughs> Don't do that because I've seen videos of people trying to take pictures of the little bear. And guess what happens? Mama bear comes running out and he eats the guy. Take a picture, honey. Get Feed him the bologna sandwich. And then, you know, here comes that thing shooting out. That's because it's a bear robbed of her whelps. It's in your Bible, right? But in America today, it's wild. They're just, you know, you could just do your thing on Friday and Saturday, and then you can go to the to the drug drug store and buy some kind of day after pill, and and that's just the way that is. There's something bad wrong with that stuff. So there is no godly line found anywhere in Genesis chapter five and six, right? There is a Masonic line, Messianic sign rather, but this godly line is just vaporous theological fantasy uh schofield's godly line uh sports incest in matthew 1 3 a professional whore matthew 1 5 and adultery is the line that leads up to jesus christ see when you use terms that aren't in the bible and they try to make these guys try to make it into something that that's not what the text says right because maybe we're afraid or we have this idea we don't want to hurt people's feelings I can't help the fact, but this Bible is like an unto uh, of being sharper than any two-edged sword. So there's there's something about that Bible that isn't pleasant. It it's it challenges, it pokes, it sticks. You go up in different churches and stuff, and these guys know the way they preach, the way they teach. They know certain parts of the Bible that they're going to address, and there's just certain parts of the Bible they're never going to touch. Well, here at Victory Baptist, we want to be able to say, you know what? If we're just if we just so happen to be at this part of the Bible and it it sticks sometimes, right? If you're supposed to be the salt of the earth, right, and you're supposed to be the salt of the earth, sometimes salt is used as a, to to preserve stuff, right? They they used to salt the meat before you had refrigeration, but also you know if you have a cut, that salt right there, you know what happens? Like if you got a cut and you're at the beach and you went into that water, do you know how you feel about that? It, it burns, but actually what it's doing is trying to heal that wound here. So you just got to learn. If, let's just say, those were the godly line of Seth, and it doesn't say that, and there is no godly line, because what I was just reading you about the line leading up to Jesus Christ. Was David in the line? Okay, was he an adulterer? See, what's godly about that? See, I don't understand that. And if there was a godly line of Seth, and, and that's who those sons of God were, 
So please tell me how come they didn't get on the ark? How godly were you and you missed the ark? Well, that didn't seem godly to me. There's something wrong with that. See, that's what I mean. You just start reading the Bible. Let, let the text stand the way the text needs to stand. And then, you know what? Have a good day. Schofield note that told you that marriage is unknown amongst the angels, right, is a lie. What he did was dissect a verse in the King James Bible to get that interpretation. To do it, he omitted two words from Matthew twenty-two thirty, 30, and thus deceived you into thinking that the angels in Genesis 6 are the same ones in Matthew twenty-two thirty. 30. They are not. The angels in Genesis 6 kept not their first estate. All right, Jude, cha Jude chapter 1, rather, verse 6. And that's Wednesday night. So we taught Wednesday night when we had that, 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 what do we have? Picture of the universe. We had a picture of the universe, and the question was, so when the devil fell, where did he go after he fell? When those angels that went with them in the rebellion, where would they go? And then that's where you get Ephesians chapter 6, right, where you're told to put the whole armor of God and stand against the wiles of the devil. And then there's principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places, right? Those things are all around here. They're in outer space. That's why I don't know if you've ever noticed. You ever noticed, like, you watch Star Wars and stuff? Do you all watch stuff like that? So, like, I remember that in 77. It was a phenomenon. We actually missed school when the second Star Wars movie came out in the, in the I think it was 1980 or something like that. And it was everything. Have you noticed everything that's up there? Everything that's in outer space. You can watch uh, Star Trek. You can watch the Guardians of the Galaxy. They're all perversions. They're mutations up there. And the way those things are written, so you have uh, in Star Wars, you got a, a man that looks like a man. And then behind him, you got uh, what looks like Bigfoot. And then behind that guy, you got a robot that looks like a robot, right? It looks like a fire plug or whatever. And then you got a robot that looks like a, a man, the gold one, and then you have a female. And they're all walking along as if that's something normal. See, whatever's going on in your universe right here, in reference to what goes on in your daily life, well, you have to acknowledge one, and that's up to you. Is there a God? I don't know. And if there's a God, did he say anything? If he said anything, where is it at? Number two, if there's a God, then is there a devil? And the answer to that is, yeah, there's a devil. Okay, so what? what is that? What's the two of them as far as their role? Is? How does that actually work when you wake up in the morning and from the time you're walking around and then the time you go to sleep? And the reality of it is, is they're both doing something. And his Bible tells you what they're doing. And you got opportunities to, to not be ignorant of his devices and figure out what the devil does. And you got opportunities to be around and figure out what, what God does, right? And so if you're born again, the responsibility that you have is to read this book. And when you read this book, like like Brother Alex was, was talking about in Sunday school, you got the puzzle and you're, you're, you're making sure it's in the right spot. If it's not in the right spot, right? And that was a good illustration. He said, there's a hole over here. And if you're not doing what this Bible says do, if you're not born again and you never learn how to rightly divide, then I already know as far as your reasoning, because everybody reasons, everybody tries to figure things out. I already know that you've got a lot of questions. Now, what you do with those questions, right? Like, so what is this heaven thing? What is church all about? What, what you do, there are two people that are wanting to answer that for you. Well, actually, there'd be three, right? So we stick with the Trinity. It would be God that wants to answer the question about that. There'll be the devil, and then I guess you're the one that's going to have to decide, so that would be the third one. And believe you me, if you don't acknowledge yet that you yourself, I don't care where you come from, I don't care, you know, you're a Yankee from Maine, or, or I mean, we really don't consider Miami the South anymore, but anyway, it used to be maybe, but not anymore. Regardless of where you come from, what your background is, right, you, 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 doesn't matter what your culture is. Doesn't matter what you used to think it was and how things should have been or, or, or a better way of looking at it is. It's what God says about the matter. After being saved as long as I have, I found that to be the case. Once you identify how God looks at it, you just, just apply it to, to your life, to your walk. And then, like the little puzzle piece, there's no more hole there. You got saved. The hole that you have now, if you're in here and you're not saved, 
they call it a God-sized hole. You heard that being taught or preached, and then you try a liquor bottle, that don't fit. You try this, it don't fit. You try that, it don't fit. And then here comes Jesus Christ. Somebody presents Jesus Christ to you, and then you, best way you know how, you ask Jesus Christ to come in your heart. You receive Jesus Christ as your own personal Savior, and then that hole is, 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 is filled. Are there more holes? Yeah, that's a salvation hole. What about relationship holes? What about the way you look at things holes? What about the way you conduct yourself? What about your attitude holes? And God has means to fill that with Bible, or the devil has ways to fill that through rebellion or witchcraft or all sorts of nonsense that goes on in the world. And then you make the decision which one you want to use. Today, in 2024, sadly, Christians... You uh, you cherry pick. So like you like one day you're all for God. All right, Lord, show me something here. I got a big problem. Once the problem's resolved, your temptation is now. Now you go see what the devil got for you. Now you will never look at it like that. You'll never quite say it like oh, hey devil. You ain't gonna. I can't imagine somebody coming out and looking for the devil. Just know that if he's not here, his devils are those principalities and those things, those spirit that spiritual wickedness and high place stuff. Those things up and out of space, all those things flying around, they're there and they're influencing you. Because I've been asked before, they say, well, pastor, can a Christian be possessed? And I've heard both sides of that teaching. Yes. And then the other guy says, no, because the Holy Spirit and you, got, you can't share and all that. Okay, so I look at it like this. I don't know if you could be possessed by the devil if you're saved. Is there devil possession in your Bible? All right. So, so obviously it goes on. Now, now here's another deal because there are also lunatics in your Bible. So every time you're depressed, that doesn't necessarily mean the devil's after you. Could just be you just I don't know. It could be something like. And again, too, sometimes you gotta watch out because there'll be Christians that say, "Well, we'll never use medicine for nothing. We'll just trust God." And be careful with that stuff because Luke was a physician. He never got rebuked for being one. And you just need wisdom and you pray about it. And if you need medication for a certain something, I don't have a problem. Take it. Don't abuse it, right? And 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 don't, you could do it naturally here, but it's easier. So I do it like that. Don't do that. I'm just being lazy. And you know that every medicine that you take, like nine times out of ten, if not ten times out of ten, they got side effects, right? So, like, you don't sneeze no more? No. But I bleed out of my eyeballs. That's why I carry, that's why I carry, you know, I don't sneeze no more, but I carry these around because I'll be watching TV and blood come out my eyes, but it's, uh, I feel good. I ride my back after the TV show. So there's all that. You got to be careful. So one of the things there, looking at Noah and Lot, we talked about that uh, Sons of God stuff. And, uh, and then uh, the, the second characteristic that I picked out, <sighs> So, so as the days of Lot, I know, and as the days of, of, of Lot, how many people got out with, with, with Noah? Do you remember? How many? How many? Seven? Seven. Okay, so how many people got out? I'll go that route. All right, now how many people were there? You don't know, but I bet more than eight. Eight? I bet more than eight because you read up leading up to that, there are cities and stuff, right? And so it was very few that got out. God said, look, I'm going to tell you, it'll be the days of Noah and the days of Lot. And so I look at that. I look at that, especially at a Bible-believing work, because, you know, it'll be like, well, how come, you know, you guys have 3 million people in Dade County and you can only muster like 30 on a good day? And it'd be like, well, God gives the increase, number one. Two, if indeed we're in the days of Noah and the days of Lot, that boy's going to get whiplash over there. Uh, you know, Lot, how many people got out? Including Lot? Three. So you got eight. That's the good one. He's a preacher of righteousness. Lot's a type of a backslidden fella, right? And, you know, his his family, at least Lot got out with his family, which is a good thing. So so some are going to get out with their family. Some of them got them intact. But I know the attack. See, God, God gives you these characteristics. The question is, what do you do with the characteristics? I've heard some brothers preach on this. Well, it has to be that way because the Bible said that's the way it ends up. I'll tell you, it ends up because that's the way it ended up. 
It was your decision. It's your decision. The, the reason why people show up to church and don't show, show up to church is because they decided to come to church and not come to church. It isn't that God predestinated certain individuals to come to church that day. That's just the way that is. And I've heard these guys preach and, and within these conversations about how, well, you know, it has to be that way, Pastor. That, that, that term, it has to be that way, is not in your Bible because if it was, you wouldn't have words like, be zealous, therefore, and repent. And if you have words like, be zealous, therefore, and repent, then it's your responsibility to sit up and, and grow, put the big boy pants on. And, and why everybody else seems to be quitting, like in Noah's day, nobody, he was preaching for however long. If that's the time frame in verse 3, it was 120, 120 years. If that's the time frame, I heard that say that it, he was preaching for 120 years because of that verse right there. Okay, okay. Okay, that's a long time, brother. You mean you've been you've been you've been at the ministry for 120 years? And how many people did you get in that church? Eight. That was just my family. <laughs> like, dang. You would think if you're not careful, you would think that God would be in result. Oh, ain't nobody sitting over here. That's uh anyway, so so you would be like, well, God, God is in numbers and stuff. I don't know that. I think he's more into just doing what he said. And Noah did what he said. Was there a time you think Noah looked around and said, yeah, there should be more than us? Same thing with Lot. What did Lot do? You know what Lot didn't do? He wasn't very good. While he had opportunities to do right for God, when that day comes, Lot's a very, that, to me, Lot, more so than Noah, characterized is us in, in the 2000s. This is this Lot more, because if you, if you acknowledge the fact that Lot, he got a busted family there. You know how many people we run into with that? And again, no disrespect. It is, I, so be like, well, why do you keep talking about stuff like that? Because it is what it is, and this is what the Bible says. But regardless of how you look at it, there were very few people. Look at 1 Peter chapter 3. There are very few people. So one of the characteristics is that there are just very few active believers. Between Noah and Lot, depending on how you look at it, Man, you're full of like scoffers, all sorts of weird stuff going on and stuff. That's that's exactly what what happens in in America today when it comes to churches. You say, well, you won't keep preaching like this, and there won't be an expectation that much change. Well, should I change the way we preach? You just pray for me how we preach, and then you know I'll pray for what I need to preach, and we'll go that route. But if you say that it's uh, my responsibility to change the word to accommodate the people. And that's what churches do these days. And I'm not, we won't do that. We'll just trust God. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to give account of myself to Jesus Christ. And it would be like, well, I'm, I'm so glad you swap, switch your format to accommodate more people in Dade County. And you preach less Bible, but had so much fun with them. I don't think that's how that's going to work. And I'm not going to do it that way. That's not how the Bible says. They bounce house in your Bible. Anyway, First Peter chapter 3, verse 20. So there are very few people, which sometimes, which sometimes were disobedient, and, and once the long and once the long suffering God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing where with few, see that? Few that is. Eight souls were saved by water. What about the rest of them? They ain't there, brother. One of the characteristics of these last days, the Jesus Christ coming back, you're going to find that apathy rules the day. There's just not that. You, you, they're cherry-picking their responsibilities. They're cherry-picking their efforts. And uh, I've, I've been through that enough in my life to tell you that... Uh, it don't end right. It might be like immediate gratification, instant gratification, because you're all excited that you didn't have to wake up and drive or you didn't have to put clothes on like that or dress up, and then you got an extra Sunday. But well, Monday comes. It, it all time flies. Brother, whether you're doing right, sister, whatever you're doing right, whatever you, it still goes. It's already, it'll be June. You're already halfway through the year. Didn't we already have that 
New Year's rut. Yeah, you got to get another list. And and it's just like that. Look at Matthew chapter 22, verse 14. Man, it's so evident. Brother, Christianity is like dentistry, man. It's like pulling teeth sometimes. And and I've I think I've reserved resigned rather as far as the role of a pastor. I used to take it so so I used to take it to heart when people didn't show up. I do take it to heart, but I look at it a little different. Because I have a Bible that tells me, you know what the issue is, people just aren't interested. What what keeps them from taking the next step other than themselves? Right. It's your heart. It's your heart. You you got the right heart about it. You be there. Matter of fact, there's an old saying. You've heard it before, right? You ever heard this? There, if there's a will, there's a way. That's what it says. And then you got Christians like you know. Well, what's your your your? Somebody read Proverbs chapter twenty verse six. You guys hot now again? I'll read it. Go ahead. I'll make it snow. Most men will complain of everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. Who can find that? Your your one of your greatest abilities is your dependability, which is why church points that out. TV does it. You ever notice what TV does? You just sit there and watch everybody else do stuff. You sit there on that couch, you eat gummy bears, you know, I recommend that. You eat gummy bears and ice cream and whatever, and you're watching these guys win wars, whatever movies you're watching, or you're fighting the, the, the evil galactic empire, and you're just sitting on the couch watching it, and it's fake anyway. And you're watching this where you get all emotional and, you know, he saves saves the girl at the end and the bad guy gets killed and you're all excited and the music, you know, cue the background music and you're walking out all like you're ready to kick your dog or something. You didn't do nothing, man. And your yard still needs to be mowed and dishes still need. You had read your Bible, right? You, 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 you can't, if you have, if you're parents, then you know, what do you do with that? And you have a responsibility that God gave you to raise these kids, right? We, Like I said, I've gone through all that. I've, we've had five, and guess what? We went to church. We read Bible with them. I, you know, and I, and, and I, I encourage you, uh, embrace the fact that God bless you with kids, number one, because if you take for granted that everybody has kids, they don't all have kids. You, you, you read your Bible and read people that don't have kids and praying. Rebecca, I think, was one of them. And she's praying, right? And she's asking for the Lord to help them. And, you know, God opened up the womb and bless you. That's the fruit. And uh, then all of a sudden now the kids become idols, could be idols. You know, anything my kid wants will do. And uh, they become stumbling blocks. They become hindrances. And one of the characteristics of these last days with Noah and Lot is that very few people, very few people do anything for Jesus Christ, for God. That's how it's looking to me. Matthew chapter 22, look at verse 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. So you'll be like, yeah, come on, let's go. And then it'll be like, you know, well, Pastor, we would love to. Well, let's look at it like this. It's not me. I'm just doing what I think God says do. Look at Matthew chapter 9. It would be that God called you, I think, right? You should make your calling and election sure, the Bible says. It should be, man, we have opportunities to do something for Jesus Christ because he saved us and be like, are we close? I don't know, you tell me. If, if, if. Jesus Christ's return has something to do with, with Lot and Noah or Noah and Lot. Are we close? Are you good? I don't know. You got you got movies portraying devils sleeping with people, humans? Yeah, all, all day. As a matter of fact, it was the, the shape of water that we went over last last week, and it was the number one won the Academy Award. It was the creature of the black lagoon. And the woman went willingly, just like in Genesis chapter six. Just just and it'd be like uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy where you got the one guy with the green girl. And somebody's getting you as to be like, well, that's not natural. Somebody's trying to pervert what God set up. Acts talks about the bounds of their habitation. 
you should ask yourself, like when you're reading that the law, like we talked about this morning, talk about the the the, the law. That, why why would God have to put a law that says don't mess around with animals? Hey, hey Moses, yeah, come here, man. Yeah, write this down. Thou shalt not, and it has to do with bestiality. And the reason being is because that flesh is just like that, brother. And you're getting into some kind of stuff there. And this country of ours, for whatever reason, everybody thinks we got some special dispensation with God. Brother, you have no special dispensation in anything. Isaiah 40 says the United States of America, like any other nation outside of Israel, is less than nothing, brother. And, uh, yeah, I pray for the people that I want to vote for, and then I show up to church. And, yeah, I pray for this country and Joe Biden, and then I pass tracts out. And then I pray for you. And thank God yesterday we had opportunities, right? We, we, we put some tracts together, and, and we went out and uh, had some conversations with some individuals. And what happens after that? God gives the increase. That's how that works. And I can work that way. I thank God. See, if you read this, then you realize when God does the heavy lifting for you. But every single time it's it's time for us to do something for Jesus Christ, and it's some overwhelming burden where you start to kind of hype, half, half, hyperventilate because Jesus Christ asked you to do a certain something. When I see that, sadly, I'm just reading my Bible like you should be reading yours. Well, that seems like it was in the days a lot. And if Noah was preaching for 120 years before the flood came, right, he calls him a preacher of righteousness. And all you got is just your family? Man, we're doing better than both of them combined, by the way, right? So thank God for the grace of God. God give us more. And I have to look at stuff like that because I look across the street and there's 100 people there. Well, how? what are they doing? Well, they got rid of the King James Bible and they, they got one service and they're doing it like this and they're bringing the trap sets in and the smoke machines in, the bounce houses in, dropping eggs on people and different things like that. And I, you didn't even have to go past that first part. I'm not going to drop this book. Nobody preaches the King James Bible anymore. Nobody. I mean, if you find somebody that pre they go out of their way to make sure that they get rid of that King James Bible, right? And we're, we won't do it. And by the grace of God. Matthew 9, verse 37. If you ever hear me say, hey, we're going to switch to the New King James Bible, uh, my wife has been poisoning me. Just know that's where that's coming from because she be pouring stuff in my cereal. All right, Matthew chapter 9, verse 37. Then say he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous. Is it? You know how many people we saw yesterday? How many people could have possibly, we, we always run out of tracks. We don't ever have enough tracks to meet, meet everybody that walks past us and put on their car or have uh, It's plenteous, man. But the laborers are few. Many hands make light work, right? Look at verse 38. Should we pray for it? Yeah, how about that? Verse 38 says we should pray, therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send for labor into his harvest. So, you know, we, we preach here or teach here and pray here. Is that, Pastor, you just want a bunch of people? No, I want workers. I'd much rather have a church like ours, 30, 35 people, maybe little kids and all that. And when it comes time to go do something, well, you know, when we go street preaching here, like, isn't it that most, if not all of you go? Seems that way. Well, that's rare. And Lord uses that. He brings stuff like that to my remembrance. And when you get to feeling sorry for yourself, like I get sometimes feeling sorry for myself as a pastor, I want to know where's so and so, where's your family? How come you didn't show up? Where's what's up going on? Man, just just don't worry about that, man. It's my they're my people, they're not yours. I just called you to take care of my people and teach them a little bit of what what I want you to teach them. And I'll give the increase. I'll be that individual that does that. It ain't about you, see? And then once you get that, 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 that takes time, by the way. If you can get to the point where life isn't all about you, then, man, you, then the Holy Spirit, right, starts flowing through you. Then you got opportunities to do stuff for Jesus Christ. And, and then he gets the glory out of it, right? And that seems to please him. All right, look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1. 
2 Thessalonians. What do we talk about? Talk about the days of Noah and days of Lot, characteristics before the Son of Man is revealed. And there are very few active believers, right? Noah had eight. Lot had three. There'll be scoffers. You remember Lot's family? Lot's family, when he finally got on the ball, you know what they did when he knocked on that door of his in-laws, his son-in-laws, when they opened the door? But they all laughed at his face in his face. And that's only because the time God had Lot there. Lot chose that, by the way. You remember how Lot wound up in Sodom? Abraham said, look, you, uh, we're not going to be able to do this together. You, you go ahead and pick a spot here. And a carnal Christian will pick, you know, I'll pick the one with the mall. That's why nobody, where, where are all the Bible believers, man, when it comes to South Florida? How come they ain't down here? Why is everybody in Tennessee and the Bible Belt and North Carolina and Alabama? Missing? I thank God for those missionaries, man. I thank God for those people that are taking their families out and they're in places that the, that the, the next 700 people wouldn't dare go to. You know, I don't know if you noticed, but the last week, and I don't know what denomination they were, but two young missionaries were killed in Haiti. The gangs killed them. Two white people, very young, like maybe Mikey and Sky's age, you know. And I looked at the comments, and every single comment, every single comment said they were fools for being there. And I have to admit, I was looking at him and I'm like, man, what a fool. What are you doing? And then the Holy Spirit of God would remind me or reminded me, well, I'm the one that sent him there. All right, who are you at? What did I say? Second Thessalonians, go to Romans 8. And what happens in America, the latest scene here in America, you... You have, we live this life, and I'm a lady to see in America. We live life like God's here to make us prosper. That's our life. We're only here so that we can buy more stuff. And that's a typical Christian in America. Sad. Look at verse 36. Romans chapter 8, look at verse 36. As it is written, for thy sake, we, talking to Christians, are killed all the day long. We, Christians, are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. That is that is your life according to what's written. But Christians don't read Bible. Right, they don't believe it. They wouldn't believe that. You don't believe that verse. Because if God called you to put your whole family in a, in a vehicle and get yourself a U-Haul and move to Pahokee, Florida, you would, you, would, you, would, you would start cussing, man. And that's exactly what happened to us when I told our family. I said, uh, hey, we're moving to South Florida. And they'd be like, you are? Like, so where are you going? I said, Bell Glade. And there'd be a silence on the phone. And Belgade is the AIDS capita of the world. Not capital, but per capita, AIDS, AIDS, the AIDS virus right there, that's the number one spot in, a, in the world, I think it is. And all I got was, how can you possibly bring your wife, who was pregnant, and your two daughters down to a place like that? And uh, my only response to that was, well, well, God called me down there. And if he called me down there, like, so look at verse 37. He says, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So I can do that. I can take as a man my pregnant wife and two daughters into Belgrade, Florida, because the rest of these verses that I'm we're more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who loved us and God provide for us. And so when I when I read about those missionaries, sadly, but precious in the sight of the Lord are the death of his saints. So the reality of it was they are if if you know the only thing I can assume 
maybe I shouldn't assume, but the only thing I can say is that, well, I, I know how missionaries get on the field. They would have had to pray about that. And if they're there, they would have already done that, and they got a level of support. And then what did they do? They died on the battlefield. And guess what? Their life's over. They're good. They're, they're with the Lord right now. They don't have to worry about all that now. They don't have to worry about the election coming up. They don't have to worry about disappointments. They don't have to worry about crime. They don't have to worry about disease. You do. And so when it comes to these days of knowing the days a lot, you know what you realize real quick? Boy, everybody acts like it's just one big party. I always say, yeah, that's how they act. Till the day the, the, the ark got closed and the flood came and everybody was drowned out. And you look to average Christians there, you know what? They're called. Ain't nobody getting chosen to do much of anything. You got you got got the fields everywhere that we're at, and the fields are your neighborhoods. They're the, they're everywhere you're at, whether it be in Maine, whether it be in Key West, whether it be wherever you're at, whether it be your school, where they're, they're everywhere. Are there people there? Yeah, they're they're there. He said laborers are a few. No, how's it going with you? You need to build another ark here to accommodate all the extra people that, that you know, are here and that. that no, I don't have to build but one ark. And there's just enough for us. And like I said before, I bet, man, had these people responded, there would have been another guy. It would be, it'd be Noah plus whoever else making another ark. But there wasn't a need for another ark. You ever wonder about that? You know, it'd be like... Uh, Straight is the way, narrow and all that. that. Jesus Christ calls himself a door. Why just one door? For all the people that ever lived, there's just one door. In the church age, at least in that respect, you only got one door to get to heaven. You want to know probably why that's so? Why you don't need 15 doors to get in? It's not like a, like a, like a football stadium where you got all sorts of entrances where they can come in all sorts. It's because there's no, there's no demand. Ain't nobody going through the door. They're just, all I need is one. You say, I'm the door. I call myself a door because I'm out here trying to tell everybody I can get, your sins could be forgiven tonight. Your sins could be washed away from here on out together. And then I look, and ain't nobody showing up. So, and you know what? I showed up. Yeah, but for, for every one of you that showed up, how many people can you think of on the top of your head right now in your family or somebody that you know about or care about? They're not saved. And you know what? They far outnumber you. And it's the days of Noah, brother. Days of Lot. All right? Go back to 2 Thessalonians and we'll close here. 2 Thessalonians chapter 4, look at verse 1. You say, you keep those things in perspective? Yeah, I don't like it. I wish that wasn't the case, but God had already seen how this thing winds up, right? Isn't that true? That's what prophecy is. Prophecy is simply God seeing that stuff and writing down what he saw. It's like he saw the game already. And he said, you know what? Uh, let me tell you, it's going to be like Noah and Lot. And what does that mean? Well, there are a lot of things that that mean. There's a lot that that means. However, when it comes to the amount of people, the amount of believers doing stuff, a lot of people get, no, nah, there ain't a lot of people doing nothing. Look at first, Second Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, or be troubled rather, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. So what's the context? Well, verse 1 says, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, right? Here's a gathering. That's the definition. A gathering together unto him. Verse 2, that the day of Christ is at hand. All right, what, what, what do we do with that? All right, look at verse 3. It says, let no man deceive you by any means. So it must be that there's a high level of deception. Well, if you've got a television, there's that. For that day, what day? The day of Christ shall not come. Except, uh-oh, there come a falling away first, and that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So, man, that's like, well, you would think that there would be like one last call and everybody get excited and, and make sure they make it before the door closes, before the rapture hits. And Lord says, 
No, no, that's not the case at all, matter of fact, because what I saw was there's a big falling away. And sadly, people are interested in what God has to say about much of anything. Now, closing, I'll say this. Now, I encourage you, man. If you got opportunity, I don't know, you know, and this is this is just the second point. Like we'll go back today after lunch, and then when I get back or next week, we'll I want you, see, this is what church is. Church isn't necessarily a place where all a bunch of unsaved people gather. And I know that's not the case because you could rarely get Christians to gather in church. I would dare say there's more saved people outside of church today in America than there are in church today. The people that have made a profession of faith like you and me, why, what would be the, why, why are you different than they are? Why are there so few people that actually get it? Well, that comes down to the heart issue, but God saw that. If he's outside of time, he told these guys that I'm reading. I got a more sure word of prophecy in my hand. I would say, well, as we get closer and closer to this rapture deal, the day of Christ, there would be people falling away. Like they start out right. Do they call you? Do they talk to you? Are they cordial? Do they explain themselves to you? In my experience, as we're getting closer to Jesus Christ, like were people talking to Noah? Were they reasoning with Noah, explaining why we're not, we don't believe what you're doing? Was it with Lot? Hey, let's talk about this. I mean, you know who knew that? Abraham knew that. You ever see that little countdown thing he did? You know who knew? There wasn't anybody going to come out of Sodom and Gomorrah because I've, I've been here for a minute. And I run an old lot at the family reunion. And he come in with his Led Zeppelin t-shirt on with a beer in his hand and a cigarette. So that tells me a lot, like a typical Christian in America, he's so caught up in the world, and I don't know what will be coming out of them gates. And do you remember how Lot and his two daughters and his wife, she didn't make it all the way out. Do you know how they came out of Sodom and Gomorrah? They had to be drug out. Right. You know what it's like getting Christians on the same page? It's like pulling teeth, man. You say, well, well how, does that, how does that got to do anything with Jesus Christ coming back? Well, because, like, when I'm reading, Jesus Christ is telling me, you know, it's going to be just like that, Pastor. I'll like, be all right. Well, so let it be. But in the meantime, God's grace is sufficient so I can keep going. And then instead of being all distraught about the fact that these people are turning into salt, they're all just like wooden Indians, man. They ain't coming. They ain't moving. Instead of that, I got you, I got you a remnant, okay? And, yeah. And what do you think about that? Oh, we're excited about that. Oh, good. Because we can go street. You know, this church, we can go street preaching anywhere we need to go, and we got plenty to do that. We can go soul winning in this church, and we got plenty to do that. We can go pass tracks out at the malls or whatever we do, and we got plenty of people to do that. I say we have plenty. I say we got enough to do what we got to do. Could we have more? Well, you go out to we walk. Yes, I guess. Yeah, sure. Obviously. Are you going to get more? According to this, it doesn't seem like it. But well, we could still be the exception. And then on top of that, you know what you can do? Just make sure you're not like Lot's wife. Because remember, like one of the shortest verses in your Bible is what? Remember Lot's wife. He probably weeping because of that. No, he ain't weeping because of that. Remember Lot's wife. Well, well it got to do with the second. In your case, it got to do with the second coming because everybody's looking back. Well, I, I got so much going on in this world. You, you can't bring none of it away. Why are you looking at it like that? Because you're not in the Bible is why you don't take it seriously. Opportunities for you to read that Bible, what's, how's that coming? Uh, opportunities for you to talk to neighbors, people that you know. You know how a church really grows? It goes from, from people like yourselves inviting people you know. See that little girl right there? That's how that works. That's how it works. You know, I got one guy so far from all those tracks. He comes on Wednesday. Uh, we'll take it. But in the meantime, I'm going to just settle on the fact that if I do what I know to do based on this book, I'll know that God gives the increase. And at the end of the day, if God calls me to do whatever he has me to do, I'm going to do that. And then when I see him, I'll be like, well, you called me to come here. I did. I, you, I bloated up my kids. And I, and I moved to Pahokee, Florida. And I went to Arkansas. And I came to South Florida. Be like, well, we lived about 40 minutes away, Pastor. We would love to come, but you know how far that is. You're not, you're talking to the wrong guy, man. I, I don't, you must talk 
somebody else because I moved my whole family for God. And I don't want to sound boastful about it because I thought that's what you did. And you're not supposed to do that. Because if that was the case, I could have stayed wherever, man, and kept my brick house and all that. Anyway, Father, thank you so much for Jesus Christ. Thank you for the opportunity to be in church. Thank you for the food that we're about to receive. We ask you to bless it. Thank you for it. Thank you for the fellowship. Thank you for opportunities. And uh, thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you for you, rather, dying on that cross for us, uh, being buried and rising again that third day to pay the full price for our sins. So we love you and thank you. Pray you come soon. In Jesus' name, amen.